What is happening guys? In today's video we're going to be showing you just what parts we put into Lonnie's mini bike engine. Uh, we put this engine on a couple weeks ago. I don't know if everybody's been watching the channel a long time, but he has the blue Trailmaster MB200. It has an awesome sound to it and it has a, a lot of power low end. The bike runs awesome and it's just hard to get that across on camera, you know, how mean that bike feels. But uh, I did film the whole process of the engine build, so today we're going to look at uh, how I installed everything and what parts we did install and make sure to click show more under the video uh, where you can see every part used on his mini bike frame as well as the engine uh, those links do help us out if you click them and go on go power sports or Amazon those do help the channel to continue to do these videos uh, shows that our videos are working guys so make sure to check out those links and uh, hope you guys enjoy the video we'll see you after first we're going to strip down our new predator we'll first remove the carb insulator and the studs Now that we have our carb removed, we can get rid of the throttle bracket, muffler, and gas tank. We can pull the governor arm, oil sensor box, and remove the side cover. Now we can remove the coil and flywheel. Remove the clips holding in the rocker pins. Open up the side cover to remove the oil sensor, cam, lifters, and piston rod. Now that we have the block empty, we can remove the remaining governor parts. Knock out the governor gear using a punch and a hammer. Make sure to remove all the washers left over from the governor. We can now finish disassembling the head by removing the lash caps, valve springs, and valves. Remove the clip on the wrist pin to separate the piston from the rod.
The last thing to remove is the governor gear on the crankshaft. We'll be installing a billet side cover for rigidity and strength. This will keep block flex down and tighter tolerances. The billet rod will give us strength and longevity allowing the engine to rev higher and longer. The billet flywheel will give us strength while keeping drag down. The Genuine Makuni 24mm carb gives smooth acceleration and better flow. The CM Cam has an aggressive ramp with max of 7500 RPMs. For valve train we chose the billet retainers, split keepers, ultralight and hard lash caps, stainless valves, chromoly push rods and 26 pound valve springs. All these parts will ensure we have a high performance engine that can take a beating. All the parts used on this build can be purchased on GoPowerSports.com. A quarter inch bolt will thread right into the governor holes in the block. I use a 7 16 fine thread tap for the oil sensor hole. Make sure to clean the block out after tapping these holes. We can now start prepping our rod. Wrap the rod in a leather glove to protect it in the vise. Use a 12 point quarter inch socket to remove the rod bolts. Place the two rod bearings into the cap and rod making sure to line up the notches. With the rod bearing installed, we can nail check our oil clearance. With the rod still in the vise, place the crankshaft onto the rod. Place a small piece of plastic gauge onto the crankshaft journal. Install the rod caps and dip the bolts in some oil. Torque the bolts down to 170 inch pounds. Start at 60 inch pounds, working your way up 20 inch pounds at a time while swapping from bolt to bolt. Once torqued down, we can now remove the rod cap and check our oil clearance. The rod manufacturer calls for two and a half thousandths to three thousandths clearance. Our clearance was two and a half thousandths, so we're good to install the rod into the block. Make sure to scrape all the plastic gauge off of the rod bearing and the crank journal. We can now install our billet rod onto our piston. Make sure the arrow of the piston and the long ear of the rod are both pointing down. Slide the wrist pin in and install the retaining clip. Oil your piston ring compressor and space your ring gaps 120 degrees apart.
Leave the piston ears exposed and slide the piston into the block. Tap the ring compressor to make sure it's seated and there's no gaps for the rings to kick out. Use the handle of a hammer to lightly tap the piston into the block. Now we can install our piston cap and torque it down to spec using the previous method. To install the billet side cover on a hemi block, you will need to drill out the top and bottom dowel holes. Install the included dowel pins with the tapered side out. Install the cam tappets and cam back into the block, making sure to align the dots on the cam and the crankshaft. The billet side cover comes with an o-ring, paper gasket, and four shims. Start off with the o-ring installed in the side cover and one thick and one thin shim on the crankshaft. Some engines will need the paper gasket instead of the o-ring to make up the end plate. Torque down the side cover to check crankshaft end plate. Crankshaft end play is when the crankshaft moves from side to side inside the block. On this particular engine, I had to end up using four shims plus an extra thick shim. We need to remove the flywheel key so we can lap our flywheel. Use valve grinding compound on the crankshaft and spin the flywheel to mate the two surfaces. Clean off the flywheel and crankshaft and reinstall the key. Install the flywheel and starter cup and torque the nut down to 65 foot-pounds. I'm using Go Power Sports head stud kit on this engine. We can now start prepping our head. We need to lap our new stainless valve so they won't leak compression. Slide the valve into the head with some valve grinding compound. Spin the valve to bond the two areas. You can see on the valve the line where the seal was made. Clean all the grinding compound from the head and the valve with some brake cleaner. To install our valve springs, I am using a spring compressor. You can find all the tools used in this build linked in the video's description. Compress the valve springs and use a small amount of grease to hold the split keepers onto the valves.
Once both keepers are into place, loosen up the compressor. Install a new head gasket and slide the head onto the block. Torque the head nuts to 20 foot pounds. Now we can slide in our new chrome ollie push rods and make sure to seat them into the lifters. Install the ultra light lash caps. With the piston at top dead center we can slide our rockers back on and install the retaining pins and clips. Set the valve lash to the specific specs on the cam card. Valve lash is best set when the engine is warm but it is still good to set cold and reset after the first break in start. Use a 9mm wrench and a small adjustable wrench to set the lash. Setting lash can be frustrating but take your time and get a good snug fit on the feeler gauge. It is also important to note to not set the lash with the compression release on. When you spin the engine over you will notice the exhaust valve opens, then the intake, and then the exhaust valve will crack open just a small amount. When the exhaust valve cracks open this small amount, the compression release is on. Make sure both valves are completely closed while setting latch. Install the coil and set the gap to 40 thousandths. Lay the filler gauge onto the magnet and place under the coil to properly gap. Then you can tighten down the coil. Install the carb manifold and carb onto the head. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure to check those links out and then go check out the playlist on Lonnie's Mini Bike. We have every episode from the time we got it in and you can see basically the whole for transformation of his bike. We still have some more stuff to do to it. Uh, and as you guys probably know we did ratio rockers on this engine later and we're also going to do we're going to start tweaking the gearing on it and mess with the torque converter so make sure to stay tuned to the channel we have the tilts and r coming out on the channel on monday so make sure to stay tuned for that we'll see how it performs it's basically an out of the box race engine uh ready to go we got some big builds coming up guys so stick around and make sure to go use those links because they do help the channel grow and they show that our videos are working uh yeah we've got more engines built so let's get this stuff done we love you guys and God bless.